गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम माई सर डॉक्टर प्रथमेश विजय कोतोड़ेकर फर्स्ट ईयर पी जी रेडियो डायग्नोसिस रेसिडेंट ऑफ डॉक्टर डी वाई पाटिल मेडिकल कॉलेज हॉस्पिटल कोल्हापुर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक ऑफ पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन इवेल्युएशन ऑफ ऑस्टियो आर्थराइटिस यूजिंग मैग्नेटिक रेजोनेस इमेजिंग फर्स्ट यू विल सी वॉट इज आर्थराइटिस आर्थराइटिस इज नथिंग बट इट इज इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ जॉइंट and osteoarthritis is commonly known as wear and tear arthritis it is the most common type of arthritis it is associated with breakdown of cartilage in the joints now the preferred locations for osteoarthritis are mainly the weight bearing joints such as hips knee spine it affects the finger thumb neck and last also other joints can also be affected uh, but it requires a predisposing condition such as previous injury excessive stress or an underlying disorder of cartilage osteoarthritis it can be managed symptomatically but the damage caused it is irreversible so staying active maintaining a healthy weight and receiving certain treatments might slow down the progression of disease and help improve the pain and joint dysfunction now what are the risk factors involved in osteoarthritis the first is the old age as age increases the risk of osteoarthritis increases it is more commonly seen in women but the it is not cause is not known the obesity is also a factor because it increases the weight on the mainly the weight bearing joints and uh, certain other factors such as joint injuries while playing sports or accidents then there can be repeated stress on the joint other factors such as it can be genetic it can be because of the bone deformities there are certain metabolic disorders which are associated with osteoarthritis such as diabetes hemochondrosis when there is too much iron deposition in the joints now which are the imaging tests used so we use uh, x ray uh, as primary modality uh, but the cartilage does not show up on the x ray so for this we use a better modality which is mri which provides a detailed image of the soft tissue including uh, the bone the cartilage so mri overall provides a better information even in complex cases now what are the different imaging features which we need to see during this uh, imaging modality evaluation so first on plain x ray radiograph uh, we use telegram and lorentz grading scale wherein we can see eight points uh, essential points such as asymmetric distribution non uniform loss of joint space osteophytes subchondral sclerosis subchondral cysts intraarticular loose bodies intraarticular deformity and joint subluxation so we can see this all on x ray now for mri higgs et al studied mr grading uh, system of osteoarthritis he gave it uh, according to which there are four grades of and grade 0 which is normal now the grade 1 it is inhomogeneous high signal intensity in cartilage on t2 weighted image grade 2 is grade 1 plus indistinct trabeculae or signal intensity loss in femoral head and neck on t1 weighted image Grade three is criteria of stage one and two plus indistinct zone between the femoral head and acetabulum and subchondral signal loss due to bone sclerosis. The grade four it includes above criteria up to grade three plus femoral head deformity. Now there are several scoring system using MR assessment of osteoarthritis of knee have also been proposed such as whole organ magnetic resonance imaging score. new osteoarthritis scoring system and boston leeds osteoarthritis knee score now we will see what is the aim of the study the aim of the study is to establish a diagnosis of osteoarthritis in adult hip disorders using magnetic resonance imaging so what are the objectives the objective firstly is to identify the osteoarthritic lesions on mri then to diagnose our accurate pathological environment on mri and staging of osteoarthritis and finally to establish diagnosis of osteoarthritis in adult hip disorders using magnetic resonance imaging now what were the different material and methods followed the source of this data was uh, the patients presenting to dr dipai patil medical college hospital kolhapur the type of study was cross sectional observational study sample size was 50 patients now the in inclusion criteria all patients they were aged greater than equal to 18 they were both male as well as female 
and suspected to have unilateral or bilateral disorders of hip and referred to the department of radio diagnosis. Now, in exclusion criteria, we see the patients presenting with dislocation of hip, fracture head and neck of femur or the fracture of acetabulum, contraindications to MRI such as ferromagnetic implant, claustrophobic patients, contraindications to use of contrast agents, and patients less than 18 years of age were excluded. They were not included in this study. The technique used was with the help of Philips Achiva 3 Tesla machine, MRI machine. Further, we will see the results and observations uh, of this study. So out of 50 patients which were selected for the study, 40 were diagnosed with osteoarthritis. That amounts to about 80%. And the remaining 10, the 10 uh, patients were normal. Uh, they had normal hip. Then we will see the different dermographics. First, the age. So amongst the 40 patients who were presented with osteoarthritis, it was seen that the mean age of distribution was 55.5 years. And the maximum age of presentation was in between 40 to 49 and 60 to 69 years. As we can see rightly in the graph, and bar diagram uh, plotted in the image. Secondly, we see gender. Now it was seen that among the 40 patients which were diagnosed with osteoarthritis, 20, arthritis, 24 were male, whereas 16 were female. So 60% males were affected and 40% female. So in our study, males were more affected. Now the grading of osteoarthritis on MRI, as we had seen, uh, Higgs et al. MR grading of osteoarthritis, it, it had four grades with grade zero normal. So in our study, we saw that the grade two patients were uh, more as compared to the other grades. Various parameters assessed. So various MRI findings were assessed in osteoarthritic patients, which are tabulated in, uh, in the table below. We can see uh, certain features were seen, uh, characteristics on MRI, such as high signal intensity on titubated image in intraarticular cartilage, indistinct trabecular or signal loss of femoral head and neck on T1 weighted image, indistinct zone between femoral head and acetabulum, bone sclerosis, subchondral signal loss, and femoral head deformity. So in this table, there are total, this uh, table is plotted for total 50 patients, which shows these characteristics of which the indistinct trabecular signal loss of femoral head and neck on T1 weighted image was maximum. Now this table uh, only focuses on the 40 patients which were diagnosed with osteoarthritis. The same characteristics were observed in these patients and it was found that uh, the commonest MRI abnormality which was seen in these patients was indistinct trabeculae or signal loss in the femoral head of head and neck on T1 weighted image, which amounted to about 87.5%, which was maximum. Now we will see what is the, uh, the plain radiograph versus the MRI. So in the 40 cases diagnosed, they were detected both on uh, X-ray as, well as well as MRI, but MRI it revealed accurate pathological involvement and also it was helpful in staging the osteoarthritic arthritis and was helpful for further appropriate management. Also, we saw that the commonest MRI abnormality in osteoarthritic patient was signal loss in the femoral head and neck on T1 weighted image, which was found in 87.5% uh, in this study. Now we will see certain cases uh, of which the first, this is the first case which we have selected between maximum uh, preferring range of 60 to 69. So this patient is of 62 year old male patient, which presented with right hip pain and limb. In this, uh, we can see that on T2 weighted image coronal section, uh, there is inhomogeneity with areas of high signal intensity in the articular cartilage. Whereas in coronal T1 weighted image, we can see indistinct trabeculae or signal intensity loss on femoral head and neck on T1 weighted image. So this is the case of osteoarthritis. Now, this is the second case, which was chosen between the preferred range of 40 to 49 years. Uh, so this patient is 47 year old patient, which presented with left hip pain. 
In this, we can see on X-ray on the uh, left uh, head of femur, we can see there is uh, in the joint left, joint hip joint, we can see asymmetrical distribution. Then there is non-uniform loss of joint space. Then there is subchondral sclerosis a little bit uh, and intraarticular deformity thus can be seen in the left side, left joint, left hip joint. The other image is a uh, proton density fat saturation image on the left side, which shows loss of articular cartilage with subchondral bone marrow edema, little bit. So this is diagnosed with osteoarthritis. So finally, the conclusion. So in our study, 50 patients were selected of uh, aged above 18 years who underwent evaluation of hip using MRI. We found that elderly patients, they presented with degenerative joint diseases and most of them had grade two osteoarthritis, which showed signal loss in femoral head and neck on T1 vector image on MRI. Secondly, we saw that there was a male preponderance in our study and the unilateral hip involvement was more common. The early hip lesions uh, were missed on the plane radiography. So MRI, it was useful to identify this early, uh, various hip lesions in early stages. So MRI was useful in early diagnosis as well as accurate staging of osteoarthritis hip in elderly. Thus, we can say that MRI is better investigation tool and should be included in evaluation protocol of patient with clinically suspected osteoarthritis. MRI offers several advantages in terms of sensitivity, soft tissue contrast, cartilage evaluation, evaluation of sinuoid pleuroflexion, bone marrow edema, and assessment of joint effusion of osteoarthritis, which can be missed on the plane radiographs. So MRI must be made available and utilized for osteoarthritic evaluation in adults so that early diagnosis can be made with appropriate treatment initiation in the early stages of disease and hence preventing the further progression of disease. These are the certain references that I uh, looked in for. Once again, thank you to all. Thanks a lot.